Hello there. Welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another Pen Resurrection Sunday workshop video. This is the new format where I'm coming to you from my workbench and uh, we're just going to triage an old uh, dead pen, see what's wrong with it and see if we can fix it. I was going to resurrect one of the pens that John sent me. Uh, this is a Schaefer PFM pen for men from the 1960s early 1960s it's a beautiful beautiful pen but I decided that before I take this apart to see what it needs and most of these old PFMs when they're not working need most of the parts replaced I decided well I'll just order all those parts first and then get into that pen at a later date today I'm going to look at this Parker 51 vacuumatic uh, from let's see if we can find a date code here I looked at this when I got it a long time ago. Yeah, this one's from 1943. Uh, I got this on eBay and it's in relatively good shape. It seems to have a good nib on it. The diaphragm is gone. We'll have to replace that diaphragm in there. Well, I'll use my vac extractor tool for that. And the hood will have to come off as well and that'll require some heat. But just, let's just take a look at this 1943 Parker 51 for a moment. I've had them in worse shape than this. And uh, this one has the, the blue diamond clip. The blue diamond, of course, at the time meant that this was a lifetime warranty from Parker. It's gold filled. It looks like it's in really good shape. A nice top jewel with no cracks or scratches. A luster loy cap barrel. I actually like this classic look of the luster alloy cap and the gold clip with the blue diamond. It looks very nice. Uh, once I've polished this up, some of that, and let's get in closer, you can see some of that blue paint, enamel paint that is in the center of that diamond is gone. And once I've polished this as well, maybe the rest of it will go. And I've got two blue paints, the testers model paints. And these are particular colors, the two colors that match the closest to the blue that was used on these pens back in the 1940s. This darker blue, I think, is what we're looking at here. There it is. Yeah, this is the 1111, RM1111, dark blue. Whereas the light color, I haven't actually encountered one of the pens with a lighter color on it. Let's see. This is the 1110RM1110, and it says GI Blue. So those two colors are the two colors they put in the enamel for those diamonds. I suspect we'll be using the 1111 paint. But that cap doesn't show any dings at all. There's nothing on the cap band. There's lots of wear, of course, and we'll try to buff that out. The barrel's in really, really good shape. No huge gouges, so that should polish up very nicely. The blind cap shows a really almost invisible seam across there, and that celluloid rod seems to be in good shape. Let's take a look at the business end of the pen here. The clutch ring and the hood are in good shape. No huge scratches. That typical line of wear that you see around these 51s from where that cap clutch wears against it over the years. Not a lot of collected ink on the inside of the barrel either. So I'm gonna use a few tools on this restoration. Most principally, my vac extractor from the inky nib. And there he is there, that's Scott. This vac extractor is not inexpensive, but I think I've gotten my money's worth out of it now. And it's really nicely built. It's basically just a collet, it comes with two collets, one large and one small. This is for the oversize vacuumatics. This is for all the regular vacuumatics and all the Parker 51 vacuumatics. And that collet just goes on the end of the pump and you screw that down and it clamps on that thread and then you can give this a turn to try to get that pump out of there. Generally, it requires some heat. <clears throat> yeah, that's not going to budge. So we're going to apply some heat to that 
and see if we can make it turn to get that pump out. So this usually takes a little bit of time. Sometimes I've taken more than a day of soaking this barrel and then heating it, giving it a try, soaking it some more, heating it, giving it a try. You never want to apply too much heat to this because this plastic will melt. It's much more resilient than celluloid, of course, but you can melt it as well. I use a heat gun, but I use it on the lowest setting, and then I wave it in front of the plastic, and I keep my fingers in the heat stream there so that if I start burning my fingers, I know I'm melting the plastic. So a little bit of heat, give it a try, a little bit of heat, give it a try, then some soaking, then some more heat, and so on until it budges but we want to do it very slowly and very carefully. A little rubber gripper. And just a little bit of heat. No soaking. I soaked it to begin with when I first got it. I soaked it a bit, but just a tiny bit of heat. Right there in real time, you saw that. I'm going to screw it back on just a touch, and then we're going to knock that collet out. Unscrew the clamp. Just tap that collet out, then we can take it off the barrel, and there we go. So that's released the threads right there. Uh, but of course, the unit itself is still stuck inside there. So we're going to screw that in just a little bit, just to keep it stable because we have to go at the pen from the other end. That means getting the hood off. So again, we're gonna need a little bit of heat. Now this will probably take a little bit more heat than the pump end of the pen uh, because this has been glued down with some form of adhesive that Parker used back in the 40s. Uh, it's similar to shellac, but it has a low melting point. So we can heat that up, but again, that will deform. So we want to go slowly while we heat this hood. A little bit of heat, give it a try. And I'll touch the pen to my lips to make sure it's not too hot. I think my heat gun is dying. Also what I'll do is I'll get it hot and then put it in some cool water and then get it hot again and put it in some cool water and then that expanding and that contracting can break that seal. Okay, so I soaked it in some cool water, heated it, then soaked it again, heated it again. I put it back on my back extractor has a nice grip handle and I think I got it to budge. Yeah. There we are. There's the hood. There's the ink collector. And there's our first glimpse at the nib. Get close for you guys. I need my loop. Okay, nothing's visible yet, so let's just extract that ink collector. Well, I might have to soak it a little bit more. There's a lot of residual ink in there, and I don't want to twist it. So I got some of that ink out, and I'm able to pull that collector out of there. There's our breather tube, and there we go. That's going to take a little bit of time in the pen flush bath my ultrasonic machine. We can get that breather tube out of there. Looks like it's in good shape. I'll run a guitar string through there just to get out any crud. And let's see if we can pull this nib off of here now. There we go. And let's get the feed out too. To be very careful, these are ebonite feeds and they're very thin as you can see. So I just grab them on the top and the bottom and pull. And if it gives any resistance, put it back in the bath. There we go. There's the little hole for the ink to go through there in the breather tube. Got to make sure that's all clear. And we'll clean this up as well and get as much of that ink out of there as possible. 
So let's take a look at the nib. Now we've got it off. I will look at my loop. And it says Parker. Kel Surprise, Parker, made in U S A. Happy Thanksgiving <laughs> from W. And it says, are you? How are you? Are you? Fine. I am fine. And it says, are you? And there's no date. Well, isn't that surprising? That is 14 karat gold. It doesn't say 14 karat gold on it anywhere either. It should say, are you 14K with a date code? And you can see Parker made in the USA. Are you? But nothing over here. That's very surprising. It might be a replacement nib. I'm not sure. Certainly the barrel has a date code on it. I can focus in on that. Very, very light. Parker 51. And see if I can... There it is. 0.3. Oh, is there a dot there? No. So it's just a 3. So that means the fourth quarter of 1943. The date on the barrel. So all of this is going to go into the ultrasonic bath filled with pen flush, which is nine parts distilled water and one part ammonia. And we'll clean it all up and then we'll start working on getting that pump out of there. I think I'm going to soak this first. It's a lot of crunchy old diaphragm in there. So I'm going to soak it first and then try to poke it out from the other end. So the collector came out very nicely as did the, the nib. Got all that ink off. And there is a tremendous load of ink. Look at that inside this barrel. Still coming out. There's a cotton swab inside there. You can see all that black ink still in there. You don't want to pull on that because you'll just snap off that celluloid rod. There we go. I'm going to need a little bit more push. Yeah, so. But there's the old diaphragm the pump mechanism of course this is usually folded back on itself over top of that collar so that it pumps ink in and out but uh, when I tried to pump it to fill it up with ink when I first got the pen it didn't work at all so we'll pull this old sack out of here easier said than done maybe I'll just cut it off There we go. And I'll extract the rest of that pellet uh, with my Dremel tool and my dental tools. In the meantime, I'll, I'll put my plastic test tube brush inside this barrel and clean the rest of that residual ink out. And here are all the parts fresh from the bath. That collector is cleaned up very, very nicely. We'll dig that pellet out of that pump. The feed is nice and clean. I'll polish that up. Of course, we need to polish up that nib with some metal polish but uh, the breather tube seems to be clear I'm going to take a guitar string and run it through the tube just to make sure there's no caked ink inside there it feels very smooth all the way through and I'm just going to stick it in the back of the feed just for safekeeping there we go now let's see what we can do with this nib I'm actually going to run a little bit of metal polish on that gold first just to get that residual ink out and brighten it up a tad first before I give it a rub with my jewelry cloth. Now I run that through the bath again. There we go. So I've taken the tip off of this cotton swab. Just run it in there just a little bit. Hold on to it. And then I can run it across my jewelry polishing cloth. It seems to have a good amount of staining on it right there. I'll work to get that off. Not that it's visible. But it does make me wonder if this is gold plated. Because it doesn't say 14K on it anywhere. Why would it be corroded? Very odd. So I'm more and more to be in mind that this is a replacement nib. 
uh, for this pen. The pen was definitely made in 1943, but this nib was not. And I'm rubbing and rubbing. I'm not getting through any plate. It might be gold filled. I don't know. It's uh, certainly a replacement. Now that corrosion, you're not going to see it. You're only going to see that bit of the nib. And that's nice and shiny. But that's uh, very interesting right there. Perhaps some of you out there in vintage fountain pen land uh, know about this kind of a replacement nib made in the USA that looks gold, but doesn't say 14K on it. Let me know in the comments if you know. So I'm going to store all my parts again in my little plastic dish so we don't lose them. And throw that old diaphragm away and we'll get to work on dremeling that out. So here's my Dremel tool with a cutting bit and again we're just going to try to get that pellet out of there without touching that ebonite cup. Then we try to dig it out with a dental pick. Get most of that latex diaphragm first. Now this is a more modern pellet from a more modern diaphragm. The pellet isn't hard plastic, it's kind of a soft plastic. So I can sink that pick into there and pull it out. There it is. So that tells me again that that was a modern sack that had that little soft plastic pellet in it. And it is ready for a new diaphragm. So now I'm just running that dental tool around that little ledge right there which is what butts up against that little collar and seals the pump. Sometimes when you've got the old diaphragm out, it leaves remnants behind. Now we have our pellet pusher from the inky nib, which has a marking on it right there and right there for sizing the diaphragm. There we go. Get that pellet right up against there. Get my X-Acto blade and feel for that groove. My fingernail and give it a mark. And there's no need for measuring. Perfect. Now put that pellet right up against the pellet pusher and we can push it right into that cup. And it went in right out oh, and it went right through the diaphragm. There we go. So now I have to extract another pellet. Now well, there's five bucks wasted. I was worried about that. That red pellet was showing right through on that diaphragm when I took it out of the bag. So, we'll have to do this all over again. There we go. If I can get that pellet in there without breaking it. So, it went in nicely. Now we get a little bit of talc on that latex to help it fold back on itself. And then we tease it back like you're rolling up your pant legs. Yeah, that helps. Just a little rod to help push, push that sack back. There we go. There, that's looking pretty good. As long as that clamps into that ledge inside the barrel. Now to put it inside the barrel, we put a little bit of silicone oil, not silicone grease, silicone oil. You get these bottles of silicone oil uh, from the hardware store or anywhere where they sell treadmills because it's uh, to lubricate treadmills. It's a lower consistency than silicone grease, just for lubrication. And I'm going to put some of that silicone oil on those threads as well, just so that it goes nicely inside the barrel. Again, lubrication. And we're going to turn the barrel, twist it, turn it, twist it, and turn it to get it to slip in. There we go. And now it's sliding. I can feel it's not twisting inside that barrel. Let's tighten that pump down just a bit. I'm going to tighten it a little bit more. Don't want to go too tight, but we want to make sure we seal that diaphragm up against that ledge. There. Just hand tight. Where's my hammer? Go and get me a hammer. Uh, como? Hammer. Hammer. Oh, a hammer sandwich. It needs the small hammer. There we go. And there, now we can test out our diaphragm. You can probably see that better than I can. Seems to be working. Now we can get out our parts and we can put our nib, feed, and breather tube together. But first I want to polish that up. I'm going to polish that up with some uh, rubbing compound. That's the only part 
that actually shows outside the pen it's right there so I'm just gonna rub it on this shop cloth with the polishing compound this is just my Meguiar's swirl remover number two it's a very low abrasion polishing compound it was already fairly shiny there we go nice and shiny now we can slip that nib onto that feed just like that we can put the breather tube in that hole now it's nice and tight i've already checked that that hole is free of debris you blow through it and i put compressed air through it as well and then we insert it into the collector there's a small channel and a large channel there's the small channel there's the large channel right there and i've been lining up the large channel with the edges of that split nib and it goes in as far as it will go and this is the last we'll see of this bit of the nib so i'm just going to get my fingerprints off it because it's much easier to polish it when it's outside the pen and then we'll put it in the pen now fitting down the hood this is a bit of a trial and error process these are single start threads that hood will go down in one position and all you have to do is mark where that is so I'm lined up right now the top of the hood with my thumb I'm going to take it back off again and then we're going to twist it around to line it up with my thumb there so I've gone a little bit too far to the right just a touch back if I tighten that down it's still just my OCD says that's off and that's tight on there good and we're nice and straight there now all we have to do is cosmetic stuff we're going to clean up that cap polish up that luster loy and that gold maybe reapply the blue paint and we're going to polish up the barrel and the hood on this pen so it's nice and shiny but first i'm going to test that nib and we'll do a test fill as well in order to test the nib instead of dipping it let's just see if it fills uh, first I'm going to I always forget to do this I want to measure the weight of the barrel first okay the body of the pen weighs 9.14 grams we press tear and then we fill it with some ink and some bubbles that's good I just keep pushing it until I get no more bubbles and we put it back we go and we're getting 1.68 1.7 milliliters of ink it's not a lot I'm surprised it isn't a little bit more than that but if it fills I'm happy so this is a 1943 Parker oh I was gonna say vacuumatic I've done so many of those Parker 51 vacuumatic and let's check the wetness wow it's nicely wet supposedly it's a 14 karat gold i'm thinking this is a medium to a broad but i'm getting some uncontrolled flow here so i'm wondering if it's not sealed properly back here yeah okay so i didn't tighten this enough that vacuumatic pump has come out and so i'm going to get ink all over the place if i screw it back down again yeah so that means there's air coming out of there so I needed to go a little bit more tight with my tool you can see how all the ink came out so I was suspect that I was not getting enough ink fill where's my tool now there it is so we got to tighten this down even more than that and if it still has an air leak there then I might have to seal up those threads <coughs> there we go so let's see if we can fill it again it's almost too wet so I might have to get those tines a little bit more closed take that nib off and see if I can just press those tines back together again a little bit to keep this from being quite so wet well, maybe I should give it a try but you got to I'm gonna put my loop on to do this because I can't see through the camera this is just a very very oddly cut nib I'm going to try to get as close as I can here but that nib slit is not vertical it's off to the angle it's very strange so that's the nib usually a nib has a vertical nib slit like that on the end but this one 
is cut like that. Very strange. Again, as long as it's writing okay, it's fine. And this seems to be writing okay. So I'm going to leave that alone for now. And I'm going to work on polishing this pen up to its former glory. So I've been fighting with this for a bit now. I took the, the pump back out again, and it's in good shape. So I was afraid that that wasn't actually sealing inside the barrel, but it is. But these threads are loose when I put it in. It doesn't actually tighten as tight as I want it to. And I was concerned about possibly air leak getting through there too. So I'm going to put some silicone grease, not oil, on those threads right there. Nowhere near that ink collector. And we're going to seal this hood. Now I need to switch it up a little bit, a little bit more. There we go. That's good nice and tight. Now I'm going to put some silicone grease on these threads as well, not just oil but grease. And if it still slips out of there, I'm going to shellac it down. There, so there should be a good bead of silicone grease right there. I'll tighten it down as much as I can. Now I'm going to fill this with ink and give it a try. But it's writing very nicely actually. It's not gushing anymore. It's not spilling ink out the front and as long as that pump there stays put and doesn't unscrew and as long as I'm not getting any ink seepage right there I will leave this pen the way it is and I'm going to now work on polishing it up and making it look brand new. And we're back with day two of the resurrection of this 1943 Parker 51. I've got it actually writing not too badly. It's still very, very wet, which I'm going to try to cut down a little bit maybe when I'm tuning it later. Uh, but I did mention that the, the nib slit is cut at this weird angle, and that is causing the pen to write differently depending on the rotation of the pen in your hand. So this way or that way. It's a bit thinner if you rotate it to the left, and it's a bit thicker when you rotate it to the right, which makes sense for that weird slit right there. But today I'm going to work on getting this pen looking like it did when it was brand new in 1943. So we're going to work on the cap and we're going to work on polishing the plastic of that uh, hood and the barrel and the blind cap. I'll just get my chart out here. We'll go through the micro mesh from 1500 grit to 12,000 grit and then use some polishing compounds to get it shined up as nice as possible. So first things first, I'm going to polish up that gold on that clip with my jeweler's cloth. It's in not bad shape to start with, but we'll get it nice and bright. You can see the black that it's leaving behind. That's what gold does. You can see after just a couple of passes, it's already shinier, and I'm starting to lose that blue. We'll replace that blue diamond after we get this nice and sparkling. Now I'm going to clean that barrel with some metal polish, see whether we can get some of the micro scratches off of that as well. Yeah, looking pretty good. Now let's see if we can replace that blue in the diamond. And before I paint into that gold diamond there. I'm going to go squirt a little bit of IPA. There we go. Just to get rid of any grease former polish to make sure that surface will take the paint. There's a tiny tip paintbrush and I'm going to try to get into that little spot. We're going to use the 1111 testers and I'm going to use my loop on this off camera to get that paint in there and it doesn't matter if we overlap it a little bit because I'm going to rub it with some polished cloth and it should rub the enamel off of the high marks and leave the enamel in the divot. And there we go. So I'm just going to let that dry the way it is. There, and I'm just going to stick it on this pencil and put it in a stand and let that dry for several hours. And now we'll just go through the stack of micro mesh 
from the heaviest grit to the lightest grit. And I'm just going to avoid that imprint. It's very faint at this point, so I'm just going to go around it. And we can put the pen back together again. And we'll come back tomorrow and take a look at that cap. Now we'll try to get the excess enamel off of that cap. And we'll start doing some fine work. And for this, I'll put my headgear on. You know, I scratched off a little bit of the inside, so I'll have to touch that up, maybe with just with one hair of a brush. Again, doing this over the camera is very, very difficult, but I think I did it. I'll let that dry. And now that the resurrection is complete, I'll give you my thoughts on how it went. I'm quite pleased with how this pen looks and writes now that it's back from the dead. I was thrown a couple of curves by this one. One was the latex diaphragm that was already perforated right out of the box. I'd write the supplier on that, but uh, I bundled a bunch of those diaphragms together from different sources into one bag, so that's out. And they're not cheap, those things. They're five bucks each. That's US. Second, the vacuumatic pump threads seemed a tad loose at the end and kept unscrewing itself when I'd removed the blind cap. I've given it some extra force and it seems to be holding, but I think I'll add a touch of shellac to those threads to keep them sealed and in place. And that might be where some extra air was getting into the system, causing it to gush quite a bit. And I resealed it with some silicone grease instead of silicone oil. So I think that improved it as well. So it's not gushing quite as much anymore. It's very controllable now. The writing is very nice. I'm very pleased with how that nib turned out, even though it has that wonky cut on it. Um, it seems to be writing very, very nicely. It's very, very wet, as you can see. It writes a 0.6 millimeter line and very enjoyable and very smooth. I was pleased with how that blue diamond came out with the enamel testers paint that I put in it. I was able to tease out the overpainting using some dental tools and it polished out beautifully. This lovely 1943 Parker 51 Vacumatic has been waiting to be resurrected for several months now, and I'm glad I finally got to it. I bought it on eBay and it was sent to me full of ink inside a Ziploc bag. A good thing it was in the bag because it leaked like crazy. The diaphragm had been previously replaced, but the pen was never really restored. Now it's in almost new condition and it writes beautifully. Not bad for an 81 year old pen. If you're interested in purchasing this pen, send me an email at inquiringminds at gmail.com and I'll let you know how to buy it. I'm selling it for $120 US plus $20 track shipping. And if you are interested in Parker 51s, this Parker 51 Demi is still available for sale. I'll put the link to my Wix website where you can look at the details of this pen and you can see my resurrection of this beautiful demi-sized Parker 51 by clicking right up here. This one was made in the fourth quarter of 1947, has a gold filled cap and is beautiful for the smaller hand. This pen really needs a nice home. And there you have it. And as always, thanks for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.